Do you work in a still air box? Are you trying to see an agar plates that look like this? What about liquid culture that comes out looking like this? That's the kind of stuff that kept happening to me when I was working in a still air box. And I, the reason I was in a still air box is because I couldn't find an affordable option for a flow hood. But I think I found one that works pretty well. I did a, uh, a test plate on this is uh, on 1020. Today is the 22nd of November. So this is 30, a little over 30 days old. Um, everything looks nice and clean on there. Haven't had any issues. I've been working in front of this flow hood. And uh, I wanted to show you guys how well it worked and, you know, sizes. There's like, when you're getting a flow hood, there's a few things that I look for. Number one is, do you have space to work in front of it? So you can see that you can hold this, there's 10 plates right there. Those are, that's 10 agar plates. Um, if you were pouring agar out of a quart jar, you got enough room for your quart jar to sit in there, being all in the clean air. So you can easily do your pours all the way up. Um, the other thing, if you wanted to do more, or you wanted to go something bigger, uh, the box can just lean up on, on its side. So this is a pretty versatile little unit for being the size that it is. Uh, speaking of size, <clears throat> this thing is, it measures just a little over 18 inches long by just a little over nine inches tall. And it's only five and a quarter inches wide. So this thing, literally, you could throw it in your suitcase and take it somewhere with you if you wanted to. It runs off of a, um, it runs off of a 110 volt. Um, it's got a, sorry, I'm turning it on right now. It's got a, uh, a variable speed motor on it. So if you want more speed or if you want less speed, less air, you could uh, adjust that if you want to. You get good airflow all the way across. And watch to see how far out the airflow actually goes so you can see how far in front of this flow hood you can actually work and still be pretty safe. We're a good foot and a half. Get a foot and a half all the way out that you can work. So you got all this space here plus a foot and a half out in front. So if you wanted to stack jars or quart jars out here this way, you could completely stack your quart jars out. You could work with liquid culture. You could do agar to agar transfers. You can pour agar plates if you want to. So this is a really versatile unit. So, uh, so far it's, it's worked really well for me. Okay, so there's a few things that I like to have. Um, I don't like to use a flame to sterilize my, my um, scalpel or my needles if I'm working with, with spores. I like to use an induction sterilizer. So whatever flow hood I'm working with, I like to make sure that it's at least big enough that I can do whatever I need to do. So if I'm doing agar to agar transfers, I want to be able to keep this in my clean air. I want to keep my induction sterilizer in my clean air so I can put it whichever direction I want for the picture. I'm, you know, I'd want to do, the, do it from here. I'd want to stand this way so I wasn't getting anything inside of my work. But the uh, point being is you can actually, you can you have plenty of room to put your induction sterilizer in here. And then you've got enough room that you can do agar to agar. So if I was, if I was going to do a transfer off of this plate, on this, oops, onto this plate. You can see there's plenty of room for them both to sit on there in the clean air, have plenty of room to move things around. So again, just uh, just pointing out, this has got plenty of space for pretty much everything that you'd need to do in a small environment. You know, you couldn't do production work on something like this, but if you're just growing for home use, this thing is perfect. So this whole unit, just turns, you can turn it right on the side like that. Um, turn it back over this way. This is the back of the unit. It's got a pretty simple computer fan on the back of it, um, but it has enough airflow to push through there like you saw. And it's got a variable speed motor on it. So I can turn, crank that up. I was running with the fan about half, about half speed. One thing that it doesn't have is it doesn't have a pre-filter on it, but I don't think that's, it's that big of a deal because the whole, the way the thing is constructed is you can actually just pull this filter out. If you're real careful, kind of get your fingers in the sides there. You can just pull this filter out and the whole filter is replaceable and the filter's not all that expensive. I want to say the filter's like 25 or 30 bucks. Um, and then the fan is right back there. So if there's ever an issue with the fan, you can pull the fan right out of there, replace the fan. 
and the filter replace is really easy. So you get yourself a really nice box and uh, this thing is really mobile, really simple to use. And they kind of did you a favor by making this thing replaceable because that means you don't have to go rebuy it every time. This isn't, this isn't like a throwaway unit for a couple hundred bucks. This is actually something you can keep with you and use for as long as you uh, take care of the filter and take care of the, the wooden box. It's got a good hard construction, it's hard wood. Um, I've already dropped it a couple times and uh, it's hold up just fine. All right, so I'm gonna go through a couple of transfers. Uh, I've got a couple of plates I'm gonna transfer. I'm just gonna go through my whole clean process. Um, if you guys feel like fast forward and go ahead and fast forward. Otherwise, enjoy. If you guys haven't worked with uh, worked in front of a flow hood before, this might be a good a good thing to go ahead and watch. You can see how kind of some of my technique. Um, you know, I'm, I'm nobody's professional, but um, I have I have good success. I don't have any issues when I'm working in front of my flow hood. So the cleaning technique that I'm using is good enough. I like to get the top of my induction sterilizer clean because I usually lay my scalpel across here when I'm not using it. That way I don't have to lay it flat down on the table. Easier to pick up and to handle and stuff like that. Okay. So this is my, these are my clean plates. And I'm just gonna take the uh, Parafoam tape off now, so it's not such a pain in the butt to work with when I'm actually in the middle of trying to do the transfers. And these are the plates I'm going to be transferring off of. And for everybody that's curious, I'm using 70% isopropyl alcohol to spray all these plates and to spray down and clean all this, sterilize all this area here. So the idea is when you're working in front of this flow hood is to stay inside of your clean area. So this is all clean air that's coming out this way. Anything that floats down and hits this area is gonna get blown out of here. And that's what we're trying to work is inside of here. So if my hands come outside of here, there's a possibility that I'm getting contaminants on my hand and dragging them back in. So as much as possible, if my hands go outside, I wanna make sure I hit them with alcohol. And if they do go outside, to make sure that my hands are still, have a little bit of dampness on them from the alcohol. If, I've, if they're gone and they're dry, something can stick to here real easily. And you drag it right back in and you'll drag it right into your work. And before you know it, three or four days later, you've got a plate that uh, looks like that one that's got the green all over it that I was showing you. So I'll try when I'm working with my uh, scalp when I'm dropping into the induction sterilizer. That thing gets like three thousand, gets up to three thousand degrees really fast. So I'll try not to have like standing alcohol in there. I don't want anything to kind of catch on fire. And then no matter what I do, even if I spray that with alcohol, I always flames. I always try to sterilize, or I always sterilize the, the tip of the scalpel with my induction sterilizer. It's nice and hot. So what I'll do is I'll take my plate. I'll drop that into the plate first. Then I'll open the one that I'm working with. I want to stay close to my... 
um, clean air as I can, and I just take a small wedge. This is pretty overgrown, so this isn't a great example, but normally I would take a small wedge out of the fastest growing segment of my agar and transfer it. Oops, this is the one I was transferring to. And just like that, so that's, that's the first transfer. So now I wanna stack these guys up so I know which one came out of which. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna go back and I'll, uh, I'll label up which one's which. So as long as the lid is on here for all intents and purposes, these should be, good, these should be fine, but I still not, I'm not gonna push them out of the clean air. Like if I have room, I'm gonna keep them right here where they're at. Just like that. So you can see there's plenty of room to do your to do transfers. There's plenty of room for this to be up here for the induction sterilizer. Um, and I could have easily, oops. Hopefully that doesn't, that's not a problem. Uh, I could have done, you know, six or seven different plates. Uh, there's plenty of room. Point is there's lots of room to work in front of here. 